Welcome back to the channel and welcome to lovely sunny Albania, the most southern Balkan country before we hit Greece. We've actually been here before. This little place down here is called Saranda and we were here last year where we met up with a good friend of ours, Patrick Ryan. We're doing it again this week, going spearfishing as much as possible, catching some sunshine, which there is loads of at the moment. Very fortunate with the weather here in October. Let's get amongst the diving. What's the plan for this afternoon, Patrick? Well, mate, uh, shit, we're just gonna head out here to the backside of Samil. We got the small little island, drops off real deep like, so grouper hunting. We've got some, hopefully a little sunset dentec action on the back. Hope just, for more fish than last year, eh? Yeah, just set ourselves up here in the middle of the street. Love Albania. It felt very surreal to be back here in our own car, heading out through the beach club again. Hopefully once that sun gets a little bit lower, some more predators come out, some dentex, and look in some holes for grouper in the meantime, and maybe even an amberjack. Patrick is straight into trying to find a grouper he's been after for months. No luck again this time. We head out to an area we dived last time where there are some interesting rocks and it starts to get deeper. I can't help but to start looking in holes and cracks despite being armed with my longer roller. I see a small Corvina in the crack and decide before I change my gun to my cave gun, I'm going to just hang around and see if there are any Dentex in the area. With no sign of my toothy friends, I swap to the 60 centimeter gun I carry under my float and we head out to deeper water around 18 to 23 meters. Patrick heads down to try and locate a particular set of rocks which tend to hold a few groupers. After seeing that he's okay, I head down. Good? You good? Good? I swam through loads of bait on the way to the bottom and something on this rock immediately caught my attention. This giant snail was about the size of my head. The animal had black and white skin, which really stood out. If anybody knows what this thing is, please let me know in the comments. On the way up, I thought I recognized a patch of rocks I dived the year before. I swim over towards them and make a dive. I'm landing away from the rock I want to have a look at. This way I can get settled on the bottom before approaching. Otherwise, if you come down straight on top of rocks, the fish get a chance to move deeper into the structure without even getting a glimpse of them. With the torch, I see two gold blotched groupers, but I want to look around a little bit more before I shoot something in case there's a dusky or a white grouper lurking in one of these holes. This rock was a labyrinth of holes, so I knew I had a lot of options for the following dives. It's quite hard to see, but as I'm coming up, I see a nice gold blotched grouper go into a crack on top of the rock. Just then I saw two small gold blotched groupers, but a little bit too small, but on the way up, I just saw one about a kilo and a half go into a hole. So hopefully I can find that one next dive. I caught a glimpse of a grouper through this small hole. I 
I spotted some Corvina on the way up and I have a terrible track record with these things. I've never managed to spear one. As I'm surfacing, I can see the bait is going absolutely crazy. Patrick said at the start of the dive that this is one place he's seen Mahi Mahi, and wouldn't you know it, one was terrorizing the bait fish in the distance. Back down to see if I can find my first Corvina. I've really enjoyed using this 60cm gun for close hole hunting like this. It really allows you to move the gun in the same direction as the torchlight, which is critical when hole hunting. There is absolutely no point in shining the light on a big grouper if your gun is pointed in the opposite direction. Patrick and I searched this area and I could see he looked in the first hole where I saw those two gold blotched groupers earlier. There was two in there, was there? Huh? Was there two in there? <laughs> I saw those two before. We wasted a bunch of time looking for corvinas that disappeared into holes and seemingly thin air. Eventually, we swam back in for sunset. For dinner, we decided to keep it simple with some fried fish. The grouper from today and mullet and sago that Patrick shot a few days ago. He whipped up a round of spicy margaritas and salsa while I did some capaccio. Margaritas, capaccio. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Um, apricot salsa. Gazoo. Gazoo. Good day of diving. We're gonna need more limes. It's dirty, it's tasty. Ooh, sweet, salty, spicy. Very refreshing. Gazoo. Gazoo. <laughs> oh, mate, what a pairing. That is fucking new spirit put down on your recipe, you mate. Try this. Exactly. <laughs> you like? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, better get in here. It's, it's gonna be gone. <laughs> yeah. Put that one down. That is fucking mm. good. Mm. Like, uh, mm. like, sort of like not ceviche, but like mm. kind of. That is on point. Okay, here we go, here we go. Oh, baby. Ooh, bro. <laughs> that is very tasty. I think oh. things are going to get slightly out of control and not for the camera. So we'll say. Good cheers, Gazoo. Gazoo. <laughs> and good night. And hopefully some more fish from Albania. Good morning. A few moments later. We are comparing <laughs> grouper, mullet, and sago. Okay, open up. Give me the fucking airplane. Arrgh, good boy. Mm. Okay, that's the first one. Second one. First one. Open up. Okay, second one. Man, these are really close. <laughs> that is an interesting thing to hear. Okay. What? Last one. Okay. Ready? No, that's ridiculous how okay. close that is. Okay. Last one. <laughs> okay, which is your favorite? Mate. I actually think the first one's my favorite. Yeah. First, I would, I would do first, second, and then third. Like, in that order that you Okay, that okay. You and what, to me. Uh, what do you think the first one was? I want to say the first one was the... The Sargo? Yes. Uh, good, good, good. The second, the second one was the Rufio, and the third one was the Mullet. Opposite way around. Oh, really? Yeah, Mullet was second. Fucking hell. <laughs> so, Mullet tastes better than Grouper. The Mullet tasted better than the Grouper for me. Really, the last yeah, one, the Grouper? Yeah, yeah. Holy mullet shit. Good. If you cook it the right way. Man. Yeah. There's the Mullet, and there's the Rufio or Grouper. So we're gonna... Oh, I haven't times. tasted any of it tonight either. That's yeah. the difficult bit. Alright. Okay. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Second you go. Yep, give me the next one. Okay. <laughs> Is it, isn't it hard? It's ridiculous. I mean they all taste great. Yeah. Okay, here we go. They honestly all taste they taste so similar. Yeah, right? It's um, fucking difficult. Okay, oh. I think the first one 
was mullet. First one was mullet. Uh, I think the, the second one was grouper, then it was saga. It was grouper, mullet, and then sargo. <laughs> I got none of them right. They all taste. Yeah. They all taste good. <laughs> That's unreal. Little geography lesson. This here is Saranda. This is all Albania up in the mountains here. And that there is Corfu in Greece. And if you go down there, about half an hour drive, you'll find the Greek border back into the European Union. Who do, who do we have here? I'm about to head out to the Greek border, eh? Should be good. Shoot some fish. Yeah. The secret to any successful dive is fueling up with Euros. <laughs> oh, man. Euros is my uh, lucky Dentex charm. Look at that. Oh, that does. Oof, oof, oof. Woohoo! This is my sort of dive spot. You can put the car right next to the water. The viz looks okay. Upon sticking my head under the water, I got a feeling the visibility wasn't so crash hot after all. Can't see much. No, not really. But I might get better out there out of this bay. I was wrong. The visibility seemed to get worse the further you headed out of the bay. It's not often you get such poor visibility in the Mediterranean, especially in autumn, but you have to play the hand you're dealt. The 115 Orca Roller was not the right spear gun for this mission. I swapped it out for the 60 centimeter gun on my float and started to hug the coastline in hopes of ambushing something in the shallow water. On the previous dives along this rocky coast, I had seen some small gilthead bream darting around in the shallows. I wondered if a larger model would be in the same area. After straining my eyes looking around on this dive, I was heading back to the surface when suddenly I saw a flash of silver up ahead. Did I hear you shoot? What did you shoot? Fucking best silver position. Fuck you! <laughs> what? What? <laughs> we got food, baby! Hey, let me see that. Holy shit, mate. It's a nice gilt head, eh? Fucking nice. That's the biggest one I've ever fucking seen, actually. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that was worth taking the trip to Greece for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is definitely one of my best Mediterranean fish, and even in this horrible visibility here, still managed to just crawl on the bottom and I guess that visibility worked to my advantage and it couldn't see me that well and it was a bit of a rush shot but did the trick <laughs> with a 60. <laughs> we were both really fired up after getting that fish in the gloom. Next dive I saw a shoal of mullets but they were out of range. Unlucky for the mullet they swam right past Patrick soon after. With a fish each we headed back to catch the sunset with Hannah and Flo. camera around. <laughs> Tough diving mate. Yeah? How are you feeling? Oh, you could not see your hand in front of your face. Absolutely no hope for that dive but I think the old Dan the man might have found some gold. No pun intended. D-Man may have redeemed the situation. <laughs> oh. With my gilt head. Ooh. <sighs> nice size. Oh. We got gold and silver medals, eh? Gold and silver medals. Gilt head bream and silver mullet. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go chop That's probably head. one of the best fish I've ever shot in the Mediterranean. We're just crawling along the bottom in the like three meters and I just saw it through the gloom and I was coming up and then I Went back down and had the 65, 60 gun and down through the top. Whew. 
So we have a lovely bit of dinner. I couldn't believe I got that. It looked massive underwater. I was like, that's five kilos. It's obviously not, but everything looked big, <laughs> big there because it was so close to you. The viz was just awful. But hey, I, I said at the start of the day, I said, this is the kind of place that you probably see all rata. Yeah, you did. You called and, it. And here we are. Hold it. Oh, Patrick's got a nice mullet. Those things were flying around everywhere. I saw them once, but couldn't get onto them. Oh. Anyways, we got a feed, mate. We're in Greece. It's it was worth. Of, it was worth traveling to another we, country. We came to another country for a dive. We got some fish. <laughs> That's nice. Well done, guys. All right, time to get back to Albania, which is there. <laughs> Gazur vlog. Gazur. After a successful little mission to Greece yesterday, we have a lovely fish, the gilted sea bream. We've also got a mullet that I've done up as carpaccio. But we're going to salt bake this with three kilograms of salt. We're going to mix that up with some water until it looks like snow. Cover this bream and bake it in a sarcophagus of salt. No other flavors needed, just the essence of gilted sea bream. That is going to be absolutely amazing. Look at the coloration on this thing. Couldn't have picked a really more perfect size fish for us and this meal because it fits ah. perfectly in our oven tray. So that'll do. It's the heaviest fish I've ever put in an oven. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah, because it's three kilos of salt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you in a bit. Party time. Party time. See you next Tuesday, man. Now we can put the music back on so we don't get copyright strikes with YouTube when we make videos. Do, 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 do. <gasps> it's ready. How do I know it? It smells ready. Ooh. It smells like that. Oh, jeez, it's heavy and it's hot. Oh, it's really heavy and it's really hot. Oopa, oopa. Oh, jeez. Uh, would anyone like to move the... Aya, whoopa. Okay, we're good, we can. What language is that? Because our Airbnb racky is not strong enough to light on fire to put this on fire, which is what you'd normally do if you were at a restaurant to get all the Instagram wow factor, we're just gonna eat it. And, oh. Oh, mama mia. I'm gonna need it. Preserve that. the edge of that lens. Yeah. Okay, oh, we're, we're gonna, hold on. Um, we're gonna need some help here. Get in there, there Flo. Come on, Flo, get in there. Hey, where's the hammer? Okay. Where's the hammer? Okay, wait, 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 here we go, here we go. Okay. You got it. We're going to peel off the skin. Oh, ah. So unsurprisingly, it is very warm. And trying not to spill salt all over the fish, but look at that naughty orata flesh. Mmm. That. It's a tasty, insane. tasty fish. Okay, camera's down, let's eat dinner. I don't know why it tastes like pepper. Join us next time for our final days in Albania before heading on to Greece and Turkey.